Hi, my name is Nadia Colburn and you can find me at NadiaColburn.com. In my last video I talked about how I came to this kind of writing, teaching, and coaching that I do that brings together writing and yoga and meditation with a kind of out-of-the-box approach to writing and creativity. And today I'd like to share with you some of my experiences with some clients recently and also some tips for how you can bring these practices into your own life. Um, so I want to tell you about two different clients, um, L and P, Lisa and Patricia. They both seem pretty different on paper. Lisa came to me to help her with her third book. She was an academic. And she was struggling and feeling really anxious about the direction that her third book was going. And Patricia came to me because she hadn't written in a really long time. She was a stay-at-home mom with three kids and wanted to get back into writing. And she just wanted someone to help edit whatever she was writing. So both Lisa and Patricia came to me for kind of more standard writing coaching. And what happened with both of these writers was that in the course of working on their work, when we were looking at what was on the page, it brought up a lot of internal work that they didn't expect to come to. And what we found was that at those moments that they were feeling most unsure, where they were feeling most stuck and wanted to actually pull back from their writing and just say, you know, this isn't working. If we could find those moments and catch them and just sit with them and listen to what was happening behind them, calm the mind down and tune into the body, what at first felt like anxiety over time led them to see a lot of wisdom there. And when they could sit with that and listen to what was happening in their bodies, both Lisa and Patricia were able to push through and really come to a whole new level of integrity and ambition in what they were writing. So Lisa's book went from being an academic book to a book that had a much larger audience. And she really felt like she was really saying what she'd been trying to say in her previous books in this, this third book. And an interesting happened with, thing happened with Patricia. What she found was that not only did she have more space in her writing to say what she wanted to do, but being able to go through that process of staying in that anxious place and working through it, she had a lot more energy and vitality and stamina, not only on the page, but also even the time that she was spending with her kids. She thought she needed time away from her kids, that's why she was writing, but having that experience with the writing gave her more ability to really be present with her kids too. So I wanna give you first just the reminder that exactly that place that you think your body is contracting, that you notice that your body is contracting and you have the thought, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Exactly the time when you want to retreat from your writing, that's the moment to quiet, to listen, and that's where the growth is going to come from. So step number one is if you're going to write, I ask you to commit to it, really commit to it for a certain amount of time. You don't need to commit to it for your whole life, but if you're going to write, say, I'm going to commit to it for a month, or I'm going to commit to it for three months. And whatever that time period is, when that voice comes in and says, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, remind yourself you've committed to it. So what's the fear? And sit with it. Quiet your mind and listen to your body. And that body holds a lot of wisdom. So at first you think it's telling you to pull back. But if you can stay with it, it's going to give you the information that you need to go more deeply into the places that you want to go and to say more truly the things that you really have to say that are totally unique to you. So that first thing is find a period of time and commit. And the second thing is be aware that that voice of anxiety and fear is going to come up and it's going to say stop. And exactly at that moment, catch yourself and keep going anyway. That's where it starts to get exciting. 
That's where the growth happens. So that's number two. Number three is really schedule your writing time on your calendar. You sit down and you show up, whether the muse is there or not. And number four is find some support for the project. It can be a friend, it can be a partner, it can be a class, it can be a coach, but because you're aware that the writing is going to bring you to these places, where you're going to want to retreat and you're going to stay anyway, it's great to have someone walking with you in that space. And so I ask you just to find some support. And I have some free support on my website. I'm going to be offering some more writing and meditation times um, and other opportunities. And I also have classes and coaching that you can find there. Whatever it is, though, Commit to staying with the project for a certain amount of time and see where the journey takes you. Because so much of our life, we think we're in control. And we say, I want to get to that goal and I'm going to just get there. What's really interesting about writing is it allows us to turn the tables and say, I'm on a journey of discovery. And the writing gets really exciting when we are in a process that allows us to discover new things. We're not just going down a road where we know the outcome. And on that discovery, we learn so much and we free up so much energy and vitality within ourselves. We come to a whole new level of courage and power and insight. So I think it's a really exciting journey and I invite you all to stay with it and see where you go. So thank you for being here with me today, and I always love to hear from you. So reach out anytime through my website at Nadia Colburn, N-A-D-I-A-C-O-L-B-U-R-N.com. Thank you, and have a good journey.